Hey Vikings fans, Tyler here to talk to you about pick and shovelware and pickandshovelware.com. T-shirts, sweatshirts, all kinds of fun, different Minnesota sports clothing items and apparel options. We got a deal going with them right now where if you buy whatever you want, enter the promo code bleeding purple, all one word, and you will get free shipping. That is promo code bleeding purple, pickandshovelware.com. Make sure you go ahead and check it out. Okay, let's start the show. A podcast about the Minnesota Vikings. My name is Tyler Haig, and I am joined, as always, by Mr. Adam Patrick. What up, dude? What's up? Just trying to, you know, catch up on some some sleep these days. How is that sleeping going? Get out. Better? My little guy's good. He's, he's he's sleeping like five, six hour inc- increments during the middle of the night. So what? I mean, I, oh, I can't. I, can't ask for more. No, you cannot. And you cannot complain about those. Are, that's big numbers for a guy good, that age. He's, that's, good, he's a good guy. Yeah, that's uh, that's big. That's a huge thumbs up. So, you know, um, it's the off season, and Vikings aren't playing football anymore. Or I guess it's the off season for the Vikings. Obviously, playoffs are still going on. Yeah. Thanks, you always kind of worry, like, what are we going to have to talk about? We do this weekly podcast. How much is there going to be? And then, kaboom. Yeah. All kinds of stuff to talk about. Oh, yeah. um, so much. So since we've spoken with one another last week on the podcast, Stefanski had yep. his second interview and then was not given the head coaching job in Cleveland. Yep. Yep. As a result, he is now officially the offensive coordinator for your Minnesota Vikings. First yep. of all, how do you feel about that? Should we be excited about this? Is this something should they have? Like, what is your take on the whole on this hire in general, do you think they were good to stick with him? Um, yeah, I think it's good. I'm not so sure if the Vikings were his first choice. It kind of seems like it was like, oh, we'll see how this, you know, Brown's job goes. And then if not, we'll come back to the Vikings. Totally. And you can't blame a guy for wanting to take a head coaching job and then, no. you know, coming back to the OC job. I mean, you know, good on you. But Take I mean, as as it's, can, but. it's a good. It's good because he's he's been with the Vikings since what, like two thousand six. Mm-hmm. Um, so he he's been there. He's been there the whole time through through Zimmer's ten years. So he knows what he wants, you know, and he knows the players. He was with Kirk Cousins. He was the quarterbacks coach last year. So he's in the meeting room and stuff with Kirk Cousins every day. Mm-hmm. So it's a it's it's good. And then today. Monday, you know, they added even more offensive minds to their coaching staff, which should make people feel better about Stefanski being, you know, the offensive coordinator. I'm, I don't know if he's going to be the play caller now with their new hire, mm-hmm. but I'm guessing he still will be. Yeah. Um, so Kubiak comes in. The first oh, Kubiak. Thing, two Kubiaks. Two Kubiaks. Two Kubiaks. And then, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, so there's a guy in uh, – Denver, I believe, saying that Kubiak and his kid, Clint, and mm-hmm. offensive line coach, and then a Gary. tight end coach. Gary Kubiak. Right? Gary Kubiak, by the way. Yeah, I never said that out loud. <laughs> All those guys, this guy, and this reporter in Denver was saying that that is a package deal. If you yeah. want one of them, you get all four of them. And I don't know if that's happening or not, but it's definitely mm-hmm. two Kubiaks are hired. Mm-hmm. And I think they're, they were a package deal. Um, that guy also said that. Kubi- Gary Kubiak was interviewing for the Vikings offensive coordinator job, which is not totally true. So you, so you can just you know take that for for what you will. You know, I was going to bring that up. I also yes, he seemed to not all the way know what he was talking about. So we'll ignore him for now. These yep. two guys come in. Interesting. Um, yep. For one reason, 
I did not know this until this hire happened. Clint was here. Clint yeah. has a history with yeah. Mr. Stefanski. With Zimmer, too. Yeah. 1314, oh. he was here. Yeah. Then left. Went to coach wide receivers in Arkansas. Oh, this dog is going to He's excited. Crazy. He's so excited about he the Kubiak. He loves the offensive coordinator talks. Like, yeah. he's very pumped on it. Yep. Um, so, yeah. He, so, he, he leaves. He actually he wanted Hugh Jackson, though. So. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. Honestly, the way this dog <laughs> operates, I bet he did want Hugh Jackson. <laughs> um, 2016 through 2018, he was in Denver with his, you know, dad. But his dad was... His dad was the head coach in 2016, and then he went was like the senior personnel guy for the past two seasons. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. Was Kubiak the guy in charge when they were winning Super Bowls? Peyton Manning. He was the head coach. He, he was, was the head coach. coach. Was he not? Okay, good. Yep. So I'm not making that up. That was the same time. Yep. After he did that, then he went to what? Could, do you know? It's, I don't know what it's Gary. It's Kubiak a front office. Here. Front office stuff, and then from there. Now he's here. Now he's here. Okay. Because he was Good. going, it was reported that he was going to become the Broncos' offensive coordinator this year. Okay. But apparently that didn't work out for some reason, which is kind of weird because him and John Elway are kind of buddies because they've been working together for a long time. Yeah, and he was his backup for, he was yep. always backup for his entire yep. career. But maybe Vic Fangio, the Broncos' new head coach, didn't doesn't want him there. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, it's, it's his his decision ultimately i feel like so that's his call as far as bringing kubiak in do you feel like so the initial reaction on twitter i was kind of surprised was very oh man they're squeezing stefanski right now they got his replacements all over the place they got and then i also saw an interesting take that they said they got zimmer's replacement that they're squeezing zimmer because well, kubiak Ste- well, is well after here. after stefanski was hired you know everyone's saying that oh he's you know he can be the Zimmer's replacement if things don't go well next year because he's signed to a two-year contract and Zimmer only has one year left on his deal. So Stefanski obviously is the next, you know, the insurance policy for Zimmer if he doesn't work out. Dude, the conspiracy theories are heavy right now. This is part of the reason I love the offseason though is because just rampant speculation with like no real uh, consequence. I love it too. I I make a lot more money, so. Yeah, I hear that. (laughs) Um, but no, he's got head, head coaching experience, Gary Kubiak does. And we all know how Zimmer likes to add people to his staff that have head coaching experience. experience. You know, you had Tony Sperano, Norv Turner. Pat, uh, or, uh, no, Pat Schirmer yep. hadn't been. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah you're right. Yep, yes. For the Browns. Yes, thank you. So, you know, he likes having that experience for guys to, you know, provide input, especially on the offensive side of the ball where mm-hmm. – he doesn't have as much knowledge as probably he would he would like to have, and he trusts the guys on that side of the ball to do their thing, so he can do the thing on the defensive end. So I think it's a it's a very good hire for the Vikings. I think maybe Kubiak can kind of be like the offensive head coach, so Zimmer can can worry about the defense, and maybe even Kubiak can do some of the, like the the time clock stuff, you know, that that Zimmer struggles with or challenge stuff, you know, that he struggles with. Give him that job to you know make those decisions because Zimmer has shown over the years he's not the greatest mm-hmm. at mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. Unfortunately, that is true. You know that the first thing I thought when this was made official or reported or whatever was when Zimmer was talking about Sperano and the, when that whole thing was at the after the season. They were talking about a buffer, a guy who could, while Zimmer was dealing with the defense and what had happened on the previous drive. Sperano was the guy who could set up what they were going to do, script the next several plays, take care of that stuff. Zimmer big liked in, having that. Yep. Big in the run game. Very, very possibly Kubiak is here to serve that purpose, to be that buffer, to be a guy that Zimmer can trust to handle the offense for a hot minute while he's dealing with the defense, which is what he wants to do anyways. It feels yeah, like I, a good fit, doesn't it? It feels yeah. like a decent move. It feels like something that is going to help them in the long run. Am I crazy? Yeah, I, right? No, That's, I don't, I don't sounds... think you have to worry. You also don't have to worry about Kubiak. I feel like he's not going to leave for a head coaching job. He's I think he's past that point in his career because mm-hmm. he had to, he had to leave before because of like health issues. So I think you know being an assistant is probably stressful enough. Where yeah. and for a guy who's uh, reached the mountaintop, I mean, yeah, what, so why would it's you? Possible. It's possible he could be there for a number of years, even maybe take over 
as offensive coordinator if Stefanski leaves. Mm-hmm. So I think and, that, also, and I think that is why people were like, "Oh, they're squeezing Stefanski because if he's not there, then they can bring somebody in." I don't think that's the move the, at the all. Hope, I think the reason the, they're in here is because of Stefanski. Yeah, the hope for Stefanski, the hope should be that he does really well, so that he does get scooped up by a team to get a head coaching job, like Pat Shermer. You want that. It sucks because he has to leave, and you have to get another offensive coordinator. And and we get Zimmer has had six offensive coordinators in <laughs> yes. six years. He's so hard to work with. Um, at what point do we but, start shifting where it's he's so good at being a head coach and he's so good at grooming his offensive coordinators that they all go on to do it? You know what? No one, no one clicks on those articles, so you know we're not <laughs> probably ever going to get there. Why doesn't Mike Zimmer have a coaching tree yet? Sean McVay's barely been a coach right. at all. He's got a tree. Yeah, Where's apparently. the Zimmer tree? <laughs> he might be. Let's get to the Super Bowl first, Sean oh, McVay. Don't even get me started on the uh, Sean McVay, that whole but thing. Another good thing about – Kubiak coming to the Vikings is he's a very good play action coach. Like he's one of the best probably in the last couple of decades to, you know, run play action. Case Keenum did well under him mm-hmm. in Houston. And that was because of play action. Uh, Kirk Cousins is at his best when running play action play calls. So getting a guy like Kubiak is, you know, you have to be happy about a hire like that. So. Yeah. It feels like he is maybe not the best, but he is one of the best at putting his quarterbacks in a position to be successful, which yeah, is he's at not, this uh, point all we're trying to do. He's not going to have an offense where the guy's dropping back seven steps or in shotgun every time, just, you know, find the open guy or whatever. He's he's going to take Kirk Cousins, he's going to see what he's good at and try and, you know, make sure those are emphasized and look at his weaknesses and make sure, you know, those are, you know, decreased or whatever. Exactly. Um, other news as far as coaching staff's things are concerned prefer yeah. oh, he's out he goes to cleveland it's really funny how the last podcast we were, it was like the fancy's gone and prefer's staying but now the fancy's staying and, and prefer's gone. gone but i think we're pretty happy with that i i would i would think we're both probably satisfied with that probably yeah, if you would have asked me i would have told you that it is uh yeah if you'd asked me that would have been the way that i would have gone if mm-hmm. I'm being honest. Um, you know, not that you've been an apologist for Prefer, but the common response to Prefer's garbage, they got to fire him, is, well, he does this really well, coverage is very good, et cetera, mm-hmm. et cetera. Um, overall, now that his tenure is over, what do you think, like, how do you feel about what he did here? And, like, I will forever be soured on the performance of the kickers from his time here. And I'm not saying that it's necessarily his fault, but I also don't think that Kirk Cousins' performance this year is Mike Zimmer's fault. Does that make any sense? Like, I don't necessarily... I don't even know if it's Kirk Cousins' fault, all of it. Yeah. I just don't think he did a good enough job, Prefer. I don't think that his kickers did a good enough job, and I think that it makes sense for them to move on. Why they were offering him a contract, I don't get but yeah. I'm glad it happened this way. Is He's that kind of how you're feeling about it? Yeah, I mean, I think they wanted him back, but they weren't, like, fighting for him to to stay, obviously. Yeah, weren't about uh, the matches. I think, I, yeah, I think he's from Ohio. Um, oh, really? Okay. So going back to Cleveland is probably, you know, exciting for him. Um, but, I mean, yeah, the kickers weren't good, but would Marcus Sherrill's, you know, would, would they have discovered him if not for Prefer? Um, or would he even still be there? Um, would Adam Thielen be where he is today without Prefer? You know, people forget about how good he was on special teams. Yeah. Um, I don't know how much you can attribute Cordero Patterson's success to Prefer because he was a monster when he was here. I don't know how he hasn't been as good, I feel like, as a returner since he left Minnesota. Um and then, you know, they hardly ever get kicks blocked or anything like that. They had one blocked this year, but that was, like, the first time in a very long time. The first time in four years, I believe, was this But thing. I think, yeah, if, if 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 you think he's a problem for the kicking game, then making this decision isn't the worst thing in the world. It's, it was bound to happen sometimes, so, yeah. you know, they have to figure it out now, What you know, whatever. So, it is what it is. I'm not sad about it. I think special teams isn't like probably the hardest 
thing to coach. That's where I'm at. Totally. It's like you could get a replacement who could do that basically at the same yeah. level. I don't know. I feel like a lot of those guys, like punters and kickers, kind of teach themselves. Exactly. Well, and that, yeah. And you, I don't want to, from my position here at home on a podcast, say like, oh, those coaches don't do anything. Because I don't no. mean to insinuate that a special teams coach is not working hard and does not oh, yeah. deserve the money that he's making. Well, but there's no. a reason why he was picked as the interim head coach or whatever when Zimmer was out. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. he's probably, you know do you know, detailed and stuff like that and yeah in in the office all the time so yes but to think that you cannot find somebody yeah who can replace that person when that is essentially an entry level position for I, I shouldn't say entry level but not a high position not you need, yeah you don't have to you don't have, you don't have play calls yeah maybe the biggest thing you have to worry about is an onside kick once every couple of weeks yeah or that all your dudes are on the field is a concern yeah most yeah. of the time for those folks I mean, is, or your punter your holders on the field yeah because that yeah happens sometimes i mean we've seen it we've seen a lot of crazy things here adam a lot of crazy was, uh, things on this on the if this, this was a i feel like this was a good year for them to part ways because it seemed like a bunch of things probably went wrong that, sh- that happened in the past yes for sure so. i completely agree with that and that i guess is my argument when people are like oh well, briefers are right you didn't do anything like they they're okay it's like man in one game this year they missed five field goals tied and had a punt blocked so like yeah and no and the vikings are a team where they usually keep things close because it's built around the defense so things go wrong on special teams that can mess up their whole all day yeah you're totally right and, and you know that's a great point now that you say that that has to be the reason that contract was offered because Zimmer was like I don't have to worry about it as a turnover or as a liability at all so cool yep. he's fine keep him and now that might turn into a liability where do you think they go I mean obviously it's not a huge hire here but like what? yeah I haven't heard I haven't heard anything as far as who they're looking at or anything like that mm. I mean I'm, I'm sure they'll probably look at guys who've been recently let go from their coaching staffs through all the coaching changes, but I haven't I haven't heard anything as far as who could be in the running. Mm-hmm. You know, it might it might even be someone who's already on their staff. So, yeah, that's a good call. I wonder what Mitch Berger's up to these days. He seemed to be pretty good at his job. Maybe he could teach yeah. everybody how to do that. Chris Chris Cluey, you know. Yeah. Hey, I don't know. Now the prefers <laughs> sure gone. That's possible. <laughs> I'm sure the Vikings would you know love to have him back. Love it. Absolutely love it. <laughs> Where's Chris? I think he's playing video games. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, so Prefer's out. What is the other news? Oh, Cousins. Ha ha ha. Cousins was recently voted most overrated mm-hmm. uh, by his peers. The Athletic. Oh, by The so Athletic I, or by? Well, it, was, it was a survey, a survey. done by the, okay. by the Athletic for, I think it was like 85 anonymous defensive players from like 25 NFL teams who were all clearly – maybe a little jealous that a quarterback got fully guaranteed money and they didn't. I was just going to say, if you take contracts out, do you think he's still the most overrated quarterback? Because Cam, Cam Newton was voted as the most underrated. underrated. But I do believe that the Panthers lost seven in a row to end the season last year. They did. Yep. They and they did. haven't made the playoffs in two years. Mm-hmm. 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 Cam Newton's good, don't get me wrong. But... Let's not act like he's, you know, Tom Brady out there. Yeah. I don't know how a number one draft pick franchise quarterback making millions of dollars underrated. is, like, underrated. Because he seems to, like, check all the boxes as all the other, like... Maybe Nick Foles probably would have been a better, better choice for that, I feel like. For underrated, yeah. 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 But nobody wants to give... If you're a defensive player, who's the most underrated? To me, it's, it's the guy the, that's hardest guys- to tackle. Yeah, That's a lot him. of the guys they picked were like Russell Wilson, Cam Newton, Deshaun Watson, mm-hmm. all those guys that scramble. Mm-hmm. Guys that are tough to bring down. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit disappointing to read that the uh, Kirk Cousins is the most overrated as voted on by his peers, but that's exactly what I thought was the first thing. It was like, okay, if you take the contract away, though, now what are they saying? Maybe ask offensive players who are involved maybe in like, game plan and can understand like what he sees and 
stuff like that. But. Yeah, what the what the goal, of, what the play design was before it went crazy. Also, you have because to, of the offensive line. You'd have to pay to read that article, anyway. Yeah, I'm a paying customer. I don't. I make no apologies. <laughs> I like the Athletic. They got they got a lot of good writers on there, Adam. They do. A lot they of good do. writers. Sports writer of the year, in fact. Oh yeah. <clears throat> I think Johnny Krasinski. Oh. It, doesn't, it doesn't matter, Adam. It doesn't matter. Minnesota? Yeah, it's a Minnesota thing. He's one of us. It's not a huge yeah. deal. Now, I wrote this down on the sheet because you suggested it as a topic to me today. Yeah. Um, and I'm ready to argue about it, depending on where you're at. Oh, I think I know what the you're talking about. Question... I, think I, I think I know what you're going to argue. So. The question is... Should the Vikings bring back Cordero Patterson? Mm. Oh, I was thinking something different. But. Okay, cool. We can argue about that one too. But this one, I want to hear. I want to hear what you're saying. What? Uh, where are you at? Um, I think it would be something to look into. See how expensive he is. The Vikings don't have a lot of cap room right now. I think around 11 million. Mm-hmm. So they have to, you know, get a little creative. And finding players to help you out. Um, we know that he's very good at kick returning. Um, yeah. he would, I think he would add uh, another element to the Vikings' offense. You know that he can he can actually catch the ball, unlike their current third wide receiver. <laughs> um, you can line him up in the backfield. The Patriots did a lot of interesting things with him last year. Yes. Um, and they did. I, I think he only got one or two he, carries the other day, but he still is there using him in weird yeah. ways. And it's just the one play that makes the defense adjust yeah. and have to acknowledge and that Zim, he's on Zimmer, the field. Zimmer even said, like, before they played the Patriots, that they the Patriots used him way better than they ever did. So, you know, I think maybe, maybe he, he, he might want, I don't know, it depends on what he wants too, because he's going to be a free agent and sign wherever. Mm hmm. But I don't think it would be the worst thing in the world if they brought him, if they brought him back. You know, when you present it like that, it makes me a little bit more um, able we're to not, stomach the because, suggestion. Because, because when he was here, he was what? Like, they wanted him to be the number one receiver. Yeah. As if he, he comes back, he doesn't have to be that. He can exactly. be number three. That's exactly where I wanted to go with that. I think him and Laquan, he and Laquan Treadwell are a very good comparison because I think both of them have not benefited – because of where they were drafted. Because they want both of those guys to be the number one wide receiver, their go-to guy, you're this, you're our, you're the weapon. Yep. Neither dude is going to be that guy. And rather than acknowledging that early, the Vikings in both cases have spent three plus years trying to make them something that they are not. Yep. If you can bring Cordero Patterson back and let him do what he's doing, use him in ways like New England was, like put him in the backfield. Just give him the ball. Don't try and make him a route runner. Just get him, get him the ball in space. I think then I would maybe be open to it. Mm-hmm. I just yeah, don't know no, if I have the confidence in the Vikings to like utilize him that way. Right? Like we just haven't well, seen. Maybe Stefanski can be that creative and do yeah, things like that in the future. He'll be but I have, there. Yeah, I haven't seen enough from what we had seen previously to to think oh, yeah, that it warrants that a second Di truck. Are you, are you judging that on Di Filippo or Turner when he was in Turner's offense? Because that's not—I don't think that's too fair. Because he obviously he wasn't a fit for Turner's offense. No, neither, neither of them. But here's the thing: is we've had who was he was was he here when Shermer was around? Treadwell half or, season, half season. Patterson was. Yeah, half a season. Yeah. When, so he when had three Turner different quit. offensive coordinators. And he and he had like I think he had like sixty some odd catches that year because he had a bunch of they would like run a bunch of screens for him and oh, Brad. You're that's right. how yeah, how you're Brad totally right. They were doing Bradford, the bubble screens. Bradford would that's how his completion percentage kept getting higher mm-hmm. and higher. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. You're totally right. I kind of forgot about that part. Yeah, you know, I don't know. He's I just think of the kick returner aspect too, because you then you, if you can just keep Mike Hughes on defense, you don't have to worry about him being a kick returner and, mm-hmm. and defense. You don't even know how how well he's going to be when he comes back, and you can put, you know Patterson's going to you know do well as a kick returner. Definitely, and he's a weapon and, too, which is and something he's a, that and he's even a good gunner on special teams. 
if they can use him like that, I'm totally okay with it. And if he's comfortable with that as his role, good to go. But what I do not want to see is them bring him in and then he wants the ball more. They don't want to use him on offense at all. They're lining him up like Treadwell was this whole season where he's he basically out there like block. He doesn't really seem like that kind of guy, though. Like He seems like he'll just do whatever the team wants. I mean, a lot of guys seem like that when they're in New England, though. That's true. Because they were like, I don't really have a choice. So. Yeah, <laughs> they're gonna cut me if I open my mouth. Yes. Even dude, Ocho Cinco was like quiet when he was in New England. Yep. He didn't play at all, didn't catch any passes. But nope. yeah, man, I don't know. I would like to see the Vikings bring him back and make him successful, but I just have such a tough time believing that that is going to be the end game. That I almost don't even want them to try it a second time with him because I just don't think it's gonna gonna go over well. But Never know. I know. Yeah, you're right. I should be more optimistic than that. Let's who would talk. You, who, would, who would you rather have back, him or Teddy? Oh, God. Great question, Adam. Great question. Teddy. Really? Yeah. You would yeah. love to hear it week after week after week of just put Teddy in. Hear the crowd <laughs> chanting Teddy uh-huh. after, after Cousins throws an interception. I don't, know I, if, I don't know if I would like that. That part would bother me. Oh, it would happen immediately. It would happen immediately. You're 100% correct on that. The second he signed here, there would be people talking about him being the starting quarterback, no matter how well Kirk Cousins is playing. That would get annoying. I'm totally with you. I like Teddy. And I oh, he's want, And I want great. Teddy to play on my favorite team. He's having the time if, of his life. I know. Did you see right now. those videos? They had like a it's dance party. Like a, it was like a rave last night. That's what know. I was like. Is he at a concert? Isn't he supposed yeah. to? Oh, it's the locker room. <laughs> My God. They had like some it's... guy on a scooter dancing and stuff. It's unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. Yeah, no, he uh, looks like he's having a really good time there. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think he sticks around in New Orleans and is the heir apparent after that? No way, right? He's got to go someplace. I, don't there's know. Gonna be, I feel like there's going to be a bunch of teams looking for starters this year. Even, you can even look at the Bills. I mean... They have Josh Allen. I mean, great, but whatever. Damn, that poor kid. Please don't go to Buffalo. Go to the Jaguars. Uh... Jaguars make sense. And they made sense when they went earlier, too. And also, you want to talk about, like, some bonehead moves or, like, the most obvious, like, Blake Bortles? Again, Attending. you guys? Like, come yeah. on. Oh, he's probably getting cut. Yeah, but to, for them to re-sign him after. Because I think, I think they have, like, $3 million. Cap room, so yeah, he's getting cut. Sheesh, man, Ugh, that's ugly, but yeah, I don't know. I like Teddy a lot, and I would rather have him on the Vikings than Cordell Patterson. Oh boy, which is a weird thing to say, but I also think that Cordero Patterson has more of a chance to play and be successful than Teddy does, which <laughs> it kind of hurts to say out loud. Uh, as a as a big Teddy fan, I like Teddy. I don't know. I'm just trying to be practical about it. I mean, it's I, hard. It's- hard not to he's a good guy yeah totally that's and that's where i'm at i'm just like a fan of dude as like human person yeah, yeah. so like i want him to i don't know be on the tv while I'm pretty sure he's somebody. teddy's not gonna get a dwi you know you're not gonna see him in the headlines for anything like that yeah probably not i don't <laughs> think i don't think that would, maybe uh, maybe in the locker room while he's dancing but mm-hmm, yeah. mm-hmm. That's good. Uh, um, do you want to i don't want to wait anymore it's the one year anniversary, Adam. One year ago today, the Minneapolis miracle happened. Oh, yeah. Let's start real quick with thanks, thanks. where were you? How did you thanks react? To, Can thanks you... to Case Keenum. Thanks to Case Keenum. Why well, you always got to make it sour, Adam? Why well, you always got to do that? He threw the ball. <laughs> so uh, you were at home. Where were you? I was here. I was in this house. I was sitting on my couch. Um, with like my face in my hands just mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like here we go again totally I had my, my coat on because I was getting ready yep. to go smoke a cigarette angrily another another Vikings last second loss you know mm-hmm. just can't ever do anything right and then it happened and there's video out there of me jumping up and down and no there's not falling Who do down I have to bribe to get that video I have it I think it's on my phone um, really? my wife took it she was like yeah I get it so, I scared my poor children because I was screaming yeah, and jumping. That was around. fun. It was fun, mm-hmm. and, and it was we were quickly, you know, punched right back in the gut. Following week, 
the loss of the Eagles. I think I think the score, I think it was thirty-eight to seven. I can't remember. No one's ever posted that anywhere. Was that the? It sounds about right, but yeah, like you said, I haven't. I've only. I haven't seen that score since the day that score happened. So. It was, and if you ask people, the Minneapolis miracle is the only reason why Stefan Diggs got an extension. You know, last summer. That's because. I respectfully disagree with whoever has that opinion. Um, I think Stefan Diggs was good before that. Um, mm-hmm. Do you think the Minneapolis miracle maybe set this franchise back a little bit? Because what we were looking at there was a team that Destiny. overachieved. No, they were not. But that's what we Clearly. thought. That's what Clearly. we thought. And what we saw was a team that overachieved in the regular season, should have lost their first playoff game, didn't, got whooped in the second playoff game. I mean, then... they were up they were up 17 nothing. So we can't we can't That's say true. that they didn't deserve to be in that game. Yeah, you're right, cuz they did deserve to be in it. Yeah, but And some fluky some in. fluky some what fluky things ha- that they got a punt blocked. I'm not saying that I don't want the Minneapolis miracle to be a thing. Because it oh, makes me happy every time I see the video, and I'm very, very you, every thankful that hear, as a Vikings every fan, every time you get excited, every time you hear Joe Buck's voice for the mm-hmm. first time, it's all there. Much, it's much different than the Randy Moss Moon Game. Yeah, man, and that's what I'm saying is like for all of the garbage memories and like sad where were you wins for this fan base. That is not a garbage memory, by the way. No, what one the mooning <laughs> the moon? one? Well, you, yeah, yeah they, you're good call. Yeah, I guess I just put for whatever reason, yeah. I just put that one in with like the Gary Andersons and the I feel like you have to separate forty one donuts. The moon, yeah. the moon and the Joe Buck reaction. Yes. Into two separate moments. Yes. Joe Buck reaction, garbage. Yeah. <laughs> Mooning, amazing. Hilarious. Wonderful. Did the Minneapolis miracle maybe blind us to what we were actually looking at from this football team? Do you think if the Minneapolis miracle doesn't happen, we could more accurately and we it took us a really long time to figure out that the Vikings in 2018 were a very mediocre football team. Uh, it definitely set the expectations probably higher than they should have been. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the moves they made in the offseason did that too. Yeah, you're totally right. So I wouldn't put it all on them getting the NFC Championship. Yeah. So and some, I think... of it, some of it had to do with that, obviously. Yeah. And if the Vikings have... make those offseason moves, it doesn't. Even if you miss the playoffs, there's a lot more expectation on your football oh, team yeah. after that. So yeah, that's a great point. I think you're totally right there. But I don't think I set it back because every team that goes on a run, I feel like has a moment or two like that where it's luck. Yeah. I mean, you could even look at the the Eagles this year that they just played the Bears last week, and that kicker missed a field goal. Even the Saints, the Saints yesterday, they were they were down what like 14, 14 nothing. And, yes, they and were. They had, they had to come back, and so I don't I don't think it's, I don't think it set it back. It's a great moment in in Vikings history. It'll be played forever. Yes, it will. Um, and then we'll be, be reminded every time afterwards that they lost the next game. Yeah, that's true. But I think you know it helped Stefan Diggs. I think he probably got a little more endorsements after that. I think you're right. Um, so good for him, but he's a very good player, so he deserves it. He deserves all these things. He's a very good player. We are lucky to have. Is it? Him. I don't know. He's he's an injury risk. Though. He's never, <laughs> happened. never happened. I mean, he has been hurt before. He did miss one game last year. <laughs> yes, he did. Um, as far as the podcast is concerned, it feels like at the end of this season, the last, especially the last two episodes, Adam. Hearing the Minneapolis miracle at the beginning of the show makes me not feel it's not the same anymore. I don't. Yeah. How do you feel about perhaps it, retiring the Minneapolis miracle from the beginning of our? I think it's a good idea. Maybe we could put the Gary Anderson call in there and say. I don't think so, Adam. <laughs> I don't think we're going to do that. All right. <clears throat> But yeah, one year ago today, Minneapolis Miracle. I love it. Oh man, you can't tell, but I'm I got all my under all my sweatshirts. I got the oh t- nice. T- 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 so I don't know. That's my little 
My little ode to I didn't even, the I didn't uh, even, player. I didn't even do that. I, had, I have Syracuse stuff on today. But. Oh, man. And, you know, the reason I have these sweatshirts on is because I was like, I know Adam is going to wear that shirt. And I don't want to be a weird twinsy podcast guy <laughs> with him wearing the ah, same shirt. I not even wear it. Terrible mistake on my part. Um, Yeah, man. Minneapolis Miracle. It's a good moment. Good moment. Lots of cool pictures and sounds and videos. Wonderful videos. And also, the Reaction. first time... First time that in the like social media era, it feels like the Vikings had had a moment like that. It wasn't Blair Walsh missing again? Yes, and so it was just waves of new compilation videos, and oh, they put Celine Dion. My art will go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Or the, the Portuguese call. Yeah. Oh God, that was wonderful. You know, it was it was a really good time. That was one year ago. Doesn't it feel like it was about six years ago now? Have you heard with the, all the, the Spanish radio broadcast of the Bears? Missed kick. Ooh, that, that's a good a, one. Heard a tiny clip of it, yeah. and I he, no, he's like no, senor. <laughs> yeah, no, senor. That was <laughs> no, papa. Also, welcome, uh, Chicago yeah, right? Bears, to the uh, painful missed kick club. Not that we're like buddies with you at all, but well, like they have they have their own fair yeah. share of painful memories. Yeah, so we're know what you're you know I know what you're going through. Yeah, Hunger Games style. Uh, to the Chicago Bears. Um, let's talk a little bit about, I guess, free agents, because that's kind of where we're coming up on here. We got the draft and all that kind of stuff coming up, obviously. But uh, we're gonna talk oh, about the most important, most important positions. Adam, uh, kickers, kickers and punters. Mm-hmm. Who's out there? What's available? What are we looking at? Is Sebastian um, Janikowski a free agent? If he is, he, they should sign he, him. He is. That's. I know. Adam. So, so our guys like Robbie Gold. That would be, I think, uh, Steve Gus, Steve Guskowski. Um, who else? There's a couple other Nugent, I think. Mike Nugent. Okay. Okay. Uh, Dan Bailey. Dan Bailey. I'm, I'm I'm a fan of Robbie Gold coming here. I'd be interested in that coming to Minnesota, not here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for specifying. Uh, he's he used to be with the Bears. Obviously, he mm-hmm. kicked a lot of clutch field goals against the Vikings, um, so he's familiar with the atmosphere to yep. kick in. I think uh, kicking for the Vikings is is enticing for any kicker because you get to kick inside for nine games out of the year mm-hmm. at least. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think I don't I don't know where they're going to go with that because just the cap situation. I don't know. How much they want to put into a kicker and Zimmer be like why are we putting so much into a kicker when he's just going to miss more kicks yeah because that's <laughs> so, inevitable isn't it you yeah know? obviously like, they have to get a special teams coach first before they get a kicker yeah for sure who they want um punters I'm not really sure who's out there this year but I, I know Matt Wiles a free agent so they might just just go ahead and, and re-sign him but, I think that would be their move because Wiles was pretty good this year all things yeah. considered whoa whoa you write this down? Excuse, it's, it's, it, yes, it took a lot for me to say that. Yeah. Um, if you're asking me who I would go with, Quigley. Yeah. 100%. Still available. No touchbacks <laughs> the last time you played. I mean, come on. You know, like he's just sitting there. Also, if, God, please yeah. send me a text this week reminding me to reach out to Quigley so we can get him on the podcast. Because oh. how great would it be to have Quigley be a guest on Bleeding Purple? Like- I am uh, I'm your number one fan. Get for real. <laughs> Go back and listen. I've been talking about you for weeks. It's okay if you punted. You know, your punts were like 30 yards. Dude, but that's hey, okay. Whoa, hey, he's not going to come on. I'm not going to let him come <laughs> on the show if that's going to be the way you talk to him, pal. <laughs> I'll just get that out right now. I'll call, call it myself separately and we can listen together. Maybe that kind of a guest situation. Yeah. If you can't show there's more a, respect there's to... A, there's a bunch of free agents out there this year that you just... just what the Vikings do over the next couple of weeks to free up cap space and stuff. Just... Depends on, you know, we've talked about Larry Fitzgerald. Uh, there's a couple of guys out there. I just wrote, like, a trade column yesterday of a couple of players the Vikings could trade for. Maybe Chris Thompson with the Redskins. You know, he was with Kirk Cousins, got one year left on his deal. Mm-hmm. Vikings need a, you know, veteran backup running back. That could be something that they look into because they've, I think they've, the Vikings have made, like, eight, eight trades in the past since Zimmer was here. Mm-hmm under the radar like they've gone with Easton and Bradford and 
last year with the offensive lineman. I can't remember his name right sure. now. And they always seem to get active trade-wise right around the draft because Spielman always seems yeah. to I don't even count that because he does so much. So much of that, yeah. Um, yeah, man, I would love to see Larry Fitzgerald play here. I don't know if that's going to happen, but that to me is like the number one. I mean, obviously you want to make the offensive line better, and that's important. Obviously, I would say it's probably... 10 percent chance i know i wish it was high i know and that i felt that way too the last time that he uh was available i mean he wasn't ever really available because he was going to resign with with arizona but i would just love to see him uh come very hard to convince someone to move to minnesota for the winter yeah (laughs) not that you know not that they're running outside and driving themselves all day long but no but you still you're here and you You'll deal with it. It's cold, and there's no hiding from the cold, no matter how badly you want to. Um, what else, as far as the off season is concerned? I don't know. Like free agents coming up, draft coming up. We'll get into some of that stuff at a later date. But is there anything else that you think the Vikings should do from like a personnel standpoint, or like where they think they should go? Like, is there any big picture stuff we should keep in mind here, Adam? What do you uh, got I think on deck? We here? talked about you know restructuring, trying to restructure Everson Griffin. Mm-hmm. Riley Reef, Riley Reef's contract's way too high. Way too high. That's yeah. uh, probably cutting some Deho. Probably re-sign Anthony Harris. Um, you know, hopefully get rid of Treadwell. Oh, we didn't talk about Treadwell. You know, the Raiders possibly oh. being interested in him. And duh, which, is not, have- which is not surprising at all. Of course we should talk about it because we basically, you basically predicted it. We were joking yeah. about that last yeah. week. They're and like then the Raiders might be interesting. And then boom. Yeah. Because they have, you know, a TV analyst as their GM now. And who? I know, that's always worked out. Totally. Right, so, right you, Matt so you have John Gruden, former TV guy, selling off all your best players, bringing a new GM, TV guy, and the First thing we hear is that he's going to give up something to get Laquan Treadwell. So, uh, I just cannot wait for next year. Tread- Treadwell was the number one receiver on Mike Mayock's you know, big board or whatever. <laughs> I bet he was, man. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that. How, how did – I just don't understand how Michael Thomas just got overlooked by everyone. No, it's that so crap. Conf- it's so confusing because all the, to me. all of those receivers picked before him are not good, yeah. and he's just tearing up the league. Yeah, man, it's really hard to believe that you can have does it so help, does it help many that, guys now looking at the draft and so does it help many that guys. The Drew Brees is Michael Thomas's quarterback. I mean, yeah. probably, probably, yeah, probably a little bit. But is he still talented? Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. Could you imagine yeah. him being with Diggs and Thielen? I mean, I can. And yeah. I would like it a lot. Would De Filippo still be here? No. Why you got? Why you got to do that? Why you got? Why you got to throw De Filippo out? Man? We're moving on. It's a new year. Yeah, and, it is and much better. Well, he's he's busy interviewing, you know, with the Jaguars and Cardinals. So to be what? Shut up. He's not interviewing. Are you serious? As the offensive coordinator? Mm-hmm. Oh, those poor guys. Yeah. You should just bump the brakes. Let them take a year. I mean, yeah. good work, man. Uh, as far as uh, D. Filippo is concerned, like I hope you get you listen, know, a new job. He's done. Man. He's listen. He's he's got a good football mind. Good play caller. No, no. But a football but he, mind. Can, can he help you? You know, steer you in the right direction. Probably. You know, he's a good quarterbacks coach. I, I'll give him that. Mm-hmm. But as a play caller, I think those days are probably over. Yeah, which is too bad because I don't think he was necessarily put in like the. I don't think he had the fairest shot at things with Zimmer being like, "Hey, man, what?" But you got to do better than that. You got to do what you. But you also have to do what your head coach wants. It's exactly. not your. It's not your team to run. A hundred percent. I if you if your head coach, your boss, isn't happy with what you're doing then you need to make some adjustments got to change what you're doing it's an easy very, easy formula very, and you didn't very, do it and you lost your job very simple it's not and it's don't be that person you know like like we've you've used an analogy before we're like clean 
you have to clean and you just like set you could clean things nicely or you could clean things and just throw them under the couch or whatever and Di Filippo at the end there he's like oh, I'm running the ball but he was doing it more of a throw it under the couch kind of way yes. we're like see I'm running but yeah. oh, I clean uh, my room I clean just clean there's nothing on the floor come on yeah. John Di Filippo yep. that's not clean so, you know, no one wishes you know bad luck on him or whatever wish him well in his future or whatever but it just wasn't a good fit you know that is my New Year's resolution is to stop doing that because I apologize for stuff that we say because I assume that people are going to hear it and be like, oh, how come you guys hate? We don't hate anybody. If we, We're not happy that guys get injured. Are we happy that it makes our team more likely to win? Of course, yeah. but we would never hope for a guy to get injured. We would never hope for an offensive coordinator slash quarterbacks well, coach to not get a job. It would take a lot, Adam. We They would know if we hated him or not. So that's my New Year's resolution. I'm not going to... Um, you know, apologize for that stuff anymore. Hot takes from here on out, Adam. Bleeding purple. That's the way we're going to do it. But uh, back to the Minneapolis miracle, it did kind of bring up some old, like, memories looking back at that. Like, Aaron Rodgers was out last year. Carson Wentz was out last year. Like, last year was was probably as good of a chance the Vikings were going to have to get to a Super Bowl. Yeah. Did you know that the Super Bowl was in Minneapolis last year? Um, I think I heard that a couple, yeah. a, a few times. Yeah. So it Kirk was, Cousins, uh, Kirk, did you know that Kirk Cousins was there during Super Bowl week? Yeah, he, he was. He, at, was, he yeah. went to the Shake Shack. He did go to the Shake Shack. Yeah. That is correct, Adam. And it's, you know, it's the Shake Shack. That's what got him, was he saw the Mall of America and he saw the Shake I mean, I'm Shack. A, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Went for it. How could you not be? It's good stuff. But, I mean, listen to us. We also like Olive Garden, so what do we know? You know, evidently that is just a terrible, terrible thing to like these days. It's pretty terrible, but it's good still. It's good, it tastes good. Yeah. It's good. Quit hating on Olive Garden. Man, it's been a good year, you know, uh, season from one year ago to now. I feel like we've grown a lot as uh, Vikings fans. Um back to dealing with the same amount of sadness adversity I think, I think having way less expectations is much better for i mean every time they have lower expectations they seem to do better yes so i, I don't think i think i feel like what 2010 99 it has gone every other all the time year yeah. just <laughs> nothing just yep. fall flat yep every every one of those years where they have huge expectations where they're picked in sports illustrated to win the super bowl yeah. or or people actually like yeah pick them it's just like mm, please and don't do that totally anytime the vikings are the sexy pick get off like start putting money on the other squads and start uh you know chilling out your expectation yeah well that's what we've learned that's yeah, so depressing dude. a lot they had a lot i feel like they had a lot of things not go their way they did. Or going against them even heading into the season, which is yes. also a characteristic of all of those three other seasons as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, think nine, mm-hmm. I think 99 was was the Demetrius Underwood year. I think you are correct. I feel like. Yep. When was Love 20, That was mid-2000s. Mid-2000s, that was, right? That was with Tice, yeah. That was actually, I think, the Wolves' like, first year as owner. So I was like, hey, welcome aboard. <laughs> yeah, hey, yo. <laughs> You're gonna and then, love you know, it here, guys. 2010 was with you know when they tried to get Moss back and stuff, and Favre was still hurt from the year before. That was the year the dome caved in because that's how bad the season was going. What was I mean, also tw- the snow, but we, I even mean, 20, we all know what it was. Even 2016, Zimmer's had some crazy years. Yes, he has. He, has, he hasn't even been here that long. No, he's like never <laughs> had a normal. Last year was as close to normal. That wasn't even normal because Bradford, normal. Bradford got hurt and Devin Cook got hurt. Mm-hmm. So, uh, like, can, is there a year? I mean, it is football. People get hurt every year. So, obviously, never going to have just, like, an easy year where you know, nothing bad happens. But yeah. it well, would be nice for him to get, like, a fair shot. Yeah, a non-catastrophe year. Because, <laughs> right. like, injuries are fine. I and just don't want my quarterback's eye. leg to fall off. <laughs> like, yeah. like those kinds of things that continue to happen. If we could get one year without a catastrophe, I think they could win a lot of games. 
I don't know if we can get a year without a catastrophe, though. Let's see. What 2014 was Peterson suspension. Mm-hmm. 2015. I don't think anything happened. Oh, it was Blair Walsh? Yep. 2016 was Teddy. Yep. And, and Zimmer's eye. 2017 was Bradford went down and and Dalvin Cook, and then this year was Sperano and Easton. And first year with DiFilippo and Cousins. People getting hurt on defense. Yeah, man. So, yeah, if Zimmer could just get a non-catastrophe year, we'd be good to go. Yeah. It'd be what nice. Do you, what do you think the percentage of that happening is, then? Same percent as Larry Fitzgerald coming to Minnesota. <laughs> yeah, <all right>. 10%. <laughs> um, man, I don't know. Do you got anything else you want to discuss? Is there anything else you would like to bring up as far as, like, writing stuff that you got going on this week? Um, I don't think so. We're the Viking age, you know, we're in the process of adding some knowledgeable draft people to our staff. So keep an eye, eye out for some more stuff leading up to the draft. Mm-hmm. Got some guys that know their stuff. You know, I, I keep an eye on college football, but I'm not, you know, I, I'll admit I'm not nose deep in a guard from Oklahoma State. Or whatever. I completely third round. agree with you. Yeah. Great. And good on you if you can if you have that kind of love for yeah, it. But no, I just I, I appreciate all those people that do that because they make it easier for everyone else. Yes, because then when I'm ready to plug in when it's close yeah. to draft time, I can just go look at those guys and we're good so to go. I, I greatly appreciate the work that those guys do. Mm-hmm. But keep an eye out for that, you know, more previews for the off season. We've done with players the Vikings should trade for, free agents they should you know, looking to signing underrated free agents, you know, priorities, stuff like that. So just keep an eye out for that stuff. I don't know what you guys are doing in Vikings territory. Just, you know, keeping on, keeping on, I guess, probably. Yeah, that's basically the same thing, bringing in a bunch of new guys, a lot of draft stuff. PurplePTSD.com is bringing on a bunch of new folks. There's a lot of very interesting articles that are going on there. Eventually, Ooh. I'll write some, too. Oh. Really good. Yeah, I mean – if the demand is there, Adam. If the fans want it. I'm kidding. I just am going to get my button gear and start writing again. So, uh, yeah, it should be good. Well, good talk, Adam. Um, happy one-year anniversary of the, you know, the Minneapolis Miracle. And happy retirement to our Minneapolis Miracle Open for yeah. the show. Yeah, we'll have a new song next week. I mm-hmm. promise. Sounds good. I will uh, send you that in just a second. And All right. Everybody listening right now is laughing because they're like, there's no way they are going to have a new theme song next week. But I promise <laughs> it'll happen. We'll make it work. All right, but uh, Skull Vikes, and see you next week. Skull. Wait a minute.